Yes. So let's discuss the infrastructure sector because FY14 saw projects worth 6.2 lakh crores getting shelved, the highest in the past 18 years. <coughs> Will the new government be able to turn around the infrastructure to talk about the current state and the concerns? Uh, we are now joined by R.S. Subramaniam, uh, CEO, CEO, co-chairman of Feedback Infrastructure. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, good morning. Uh, let's start with the power sector because uh, you know, I was just reading some report that uh, some animal spirit is coming back uh, in the power sector at least uh, for uh, some of the asset buyers. Uh, uh, what's your call on that? No, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, the animal spirits are back, certainly, in the power sector. Uh, and I think it goes back to the uh, uh, confidence building and the sentiment improvement in the market that uh, the new government has brought in, particularly the uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Modi. Uh, I think from that point of view, he's done a, a singular service to the power sector. He's brought back uh, the mojo, saying that the government uh, is now determined to actually uh, push through certain steps, certain reforms across the infrastructure, equally importantly in the power sector as well. So I, I don't think I can single out any particular step that the government has taken. But I think what is far more crucial is that he has infused a certain uh, confidence that this government is pro-business, that it is actually going to take steps one, two, three, four in the medium term. And I think it is that sentiment that has talked up the markets and given industry as well, investors as well, the confidence uh, that they are able to actually uh, look to the sector growing. So the recent deals, for example, in the power sector, I think are testimony to this. You know, uh, What has happened is really, to my mind, the market sentiment has improved. Investors are feeling much more confident that this government will indeed take decisions, even if they have not already taken it. And I think, therefore, there's a certain buoyancy in the power sector. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ramasubramaniam, that was actually my next question because, uh, you know, we've seen two deals which have taken place in the past month itself within the power space. Do you think that M&A is now going to pick up quite significantly and maybe at good valuations as well, despite the fact that those companies are highly leveraged and would have to get rid of the assets because of uh, leverage concerns? See, I think there's no denying that there are a number of uh, companies and assets which are highly leveraged, uh, which have seen tough times, their cash flows are under stress, and therefore assets are available. Uh, the question that is, I think, debatable is saying how many uh, Reliance Powers or um, uh, Adanis are there who have actually got the power to take on more debt, whose cash flows will become positive in the next 20 to 30 years, and therefore are in a position to buy. I think the couple of deals that we have seen are examples where they are able to take on more debt. Their own projects in the past have turned the corner, cash flows are turning positive, and they're looking to buy out assets which have a 40, 50 year life ahead, and which are all cash flow positive. I personally think that there will be a few more deals, but not the kind of mega uh, M&A activity in the power sector that we can expect based on just these two couple of deals, but certainly I think uh, there will be buoyancy in the M&A uh, space in the power sector. I think it bodes well uh, in the immediate short term. Assets are coming into the place. Huh? Huh. I'd just like to add one more thing. I'm also seeing a uptick in banks which have actually got uh, you know poorly performing loans in the sector willing to take over stressed assets by themselves as a consortium uh, and then say, can we preserve it in the short term, develop those projects, turn them around, and then exit. So I think uh, banks are under pressure to take over assets that are not performing, turn them around, uh, and, and then exit. You'll find that also activity picking up. Mm -hmm. uh, call it what you will call it, uh, turn around, or call it entry by banks into the sector. I think that's, that's something that but we are seeing on the ground happening. Mr. Bala Subramanian, but uh, how, you, you know, how confident, oh, sorry, Mr. Ram Subramanian, how confident would you be about banks' ability to turn around these projects uh, since you mentioned that point? No, I don't think banks by themselves can turn, turn it around, so it can only be a short-term stopgap measure of their stepping in. Right? They'll have to look at some uh, in, the, in the short term, they'll have to look at some other intermediary agency which is able to develop those projects, project manage them, uh, maybe commission them, etc. But in the uh, longer term, obviously, they'll have to get in new uh, investors into those projects. 
But I think banks will need to necessarily develop the skill if they are to be in the uh, banking business, because it's inevitable that some loans will go bad, and they will necessarily have to step in. So I think the positive thing that I see is saying the realization by banks that they will necessarily have to step in as opposed to letting things drift. I think that's the positive that I see in the sector. Okay, does that, uh, but if you look at the glass half empty, Mr. Ramasubramaniam, then you could also tell that banks are taking over the assets because they are being proactive. However, the amount of loans which are going bad could possibly be increasing and hence maybe banks are now becoming more proactive to stem the losses that we're seeing. Uh, just to extend that point, has execution from a company perspective picked up on the ground? Uh, I, I think execution from a company perspective has picked up. We are seeing a couple of assets, as I said, uh, where banks want to step in. They are right now in the uh, preserving the asset mode. They have not yet gone into hmm. further hmm. development of the asset, but I think it's bound to happen. Uh, going back to the point that you raised earlier, uh, I think, yes, one can argue that the glass is half full, but to me it does not matter whether they are stepping in because the loans are already... Uh, far too stretched and they've gone beyond a point or whether they really see some positive uh, uh, you know, impact of their stepping in. Hmm. To me, it doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that banks today are stepping in and are trying to revive assets. And I think increasingly, whether it's the power sector, whether it's the highway sector, I think that is the way to go. Banks will necessarily have to step in, uh, remove uh, any anecdotal, Any anecdotal examples that you can provide us of banks having already done that in certain companies or projects? Uh, yeah, I, you know, since some of these deals are uh, currently underway with us as a uh, infrastructure uh, services provider, I can't reveal the names, mm -hmm. uh, but I can tell you that there are two power assets, for example, right, where uh, the, the investor, the promoter is in default, the banks are stepping in, they are talking to us about saying a six-month preservation uh, window where we preserve the asset and then get on to project management uh, and then get on to commissioning and further O&M and then try for an ultimate uh, sellout. We actually have two mandates uh, in this sector uh, and I can increasingly see that uh, this will happen not just in the power sector as I said earlier uh, but in other sectors of infra as well. But that's the power sector that you were referring to for the for these two mandates? Yeah, this, this is the power sector that I am referring to but I can see that uh, this will happen increasingly in other sectors as well. Highway's uh, notable example, I think it's uh, probably staring at us in the face. Okay. All right, Mr. Ramasubramaniam, we leave it at that. Thanks very much for joining in and sharing your thoughts as always. So maybe there could be some amount of a pickup of m &A within the power space and uh, also, banks are apparently taking over a couple of projects or maybe assets of particular power companies in order to start uh, running the projects themselves. That's the word coming in from Feedback Infra.